and it read the following. Would you like to go to Gaza by boat? If so, call this number. In 2008, the illegal Israeli siege of Gaza had been going for more than a year. A siege that is medieval in its cruelty and its complexity. 1.8 million human beings unable to leave or move more than 24 miles from where they live. Every day, bombs falling. It's Ramadan now. Every single night in Ramadan, the Israelis bomb Gaza. They do not get one night of peace. I met a brother at a mosque just uh, yesterday, he said. Last Ramadan, he lost six members of his family, Israeli rocket. Just before Iftar. They do it just before Iftar. And this year in Ramadan in Gaza, there isn't even any power. There's no electricity. So there's no Iftar anyway when the, when the bombs fall. It hurt me to read about these things. So I looked at the message, I even printed it out. I knew it was the most dangerous thing I was ever considering. Go to Gaza by boat, go to go. Call the number, I'm not calling the number, I'm not. I called the number. I called the number and a voice said, hello, Osama here. I thought you've got to be joking me. Go to Gaza by boat with Osama. No way, that's too crazy. Alhamdulillah, I was a different Osama. <laughs> and so, again, I went to my boss and I said, I want to go to Palestine this time by boat. It's going to be dangerous. He said, here's a blank check. Off you go. I thought, he just wants to get rid of me. <laughs> he wants me off the payroll. And so, in the end of July in 2008, I joined 44 other wonderful human beings from across the world, none of them Muslims, none of them Muslims, to try to break the siege of Gaza, symbolically to wake up the world. Now, the Free Gaza Movement was started by a lady called Greta Berlin, who's from California. She's a great lady. And Mary Hughes. And they were both in their 60s. So it's a, it's a, it was run by women in their 60s, alhamdulillah. And they managed, through the internet, to raise enough money for two boats. But what boats? They were the oldest, stinkiest Greek fishing vessels you've ever seen in your life. They were a joke. The free Gaza, if you steered left, it went right. The Liberty, if you plugged a fridge in, all of the electrics died. And these two boats, we were supposed to sail against the Israeli military? Crazy. Every one of the 44 people signed a will. We said goodbye to our families. You have to understand that for 44 years, not a single ship had sailed from the world to the Palestinian shore of Gaza. 44 years. The Palestinians have no railroad to other parts of the world. They have no airports to other parts of the world. In Gaza, they have no control. In fact, the whole of Palestine have no control over their own borders. They can't travel. But they have a little bit of sea left. And they go on the beach and they look and they go, where are you guys? Where is the Ummah? Where are, where's the rest of the world? Why aren't you coming to see us? And the only thing that they see are Israeli military ships firing on their fishermen, firing on their villages. But in August 2008, two little ships took 33 hours from Cyprus, crossed the sea, and came into sight of Gaza. As long as I live, I will never forget the moment our Irish skipper climbed the mast and said, Land ahoy. And there in the distance was Gaza rising out of a mist. We'd made it. We had made it. And then as we got closer, we could see dots in the distance, and we didn't know what the dots were until we got closer, and we realized there were people. Not just a few people, tens of thousands of Palestinians, many of whom had slept for three days on the beach because they couldn't believe what they were 